this is courtesy of variety i'm pretty sure right this is about ellen degeneres i'm pretty sure it's an ellen degeneres story so yeah ellen degeneres um obviously t- um what did you say yeah ellen degeneres recently if i'm not mistaken the show's actually cancelled or she either cancelled or she stepped away one or the other it's not going to continue on and obviously some people are hypothesizing that the reason why it's cancelled is because of that earlier scandal sometime in the beginning of the year where it was basically revealed that ellen DeGeneres' kind of be kind happy go lucky persona on tv wasn't actually what it was all cracked up to be behind closed doors she was a bit of a tyrant um the people that she had work with her were directly underneath her who were basically reporting to her were also fairly uh you know shitty people to their employees and there was generally a bit of a you know horrible atmosphere behind the scenes away from the cameras and of course then the generous denied it um she fought against it um but the feeling was eventually the show was eventually going to get cancelled because you know i guess if you're in the generous and you've kind of shown the public or you kind of want the public to see you one way and it's revealed that you're another way, it's fairly difficult to come back from that. It's probably better just to be a C-U-N-T from the very beginning or from the outset and just be a bit of a horrible person so everyone knows what you're like. Like a Wendy Williams, for instance, right? If somebody was to reveal Wendy Williams runs a tight ship and she's a bit of a tyrant and she doesn't, you know, she shouts at you in the morning if you don't bring her a particular milk set, a particular temperature, no one's going to bat an eyelid. But when you're Ellen generous, it's probably really difficult to fight against that. So even though Kevin Hart reached out to her and did that real, you know, cringy, I would say, uh, PR move where <clears throat> he decided to have lunch with her in public and he also defended her pretty forthrightly, which I thought was nice, to be fair, because she did defend him too when he was going through his stuff. So I like that he was able to step out in front and say, no, this is my friend and, you know, leave her alone. It didn't work. And in the end, I guess the public were turned off by her maybe as well in partly due to how she responded to covid and lockdowns and jimbo when she said there was something like um i think she was, if the, i think it was her which uploaded the video and she's like oh we're all, we're all in this together remember remember those those phrases everyone was using new normal we're all in this together stay home be safe i remember she uploaded one of those kind of videos using one of those catchphrases and everyone was like mm, we're not all this together because look at your background it looks like you've got the amazon forest as a garden you've got a roof where we can't see the flipping ceiling right that's how high up your roof goes <laughs> we're not all in this together at all your experience of a lockdown is far different from mine living in a one-bedroom apartment you know with windows are not open so for sure that might have added to it but she has been very adamant that that's not the case and in this new interview <clears throat> courtesy of variety i think she sat down with somebody actually but this is a little excerpt that variety basically spoke about any generous says the negative press cycle was orchestrated and misogynistic in the first interview after announcing shows and of course she would say that right uh, uh, um as if she was going to take responsibility for her own actions and maybe reflect on what she might have done to contribute to her show ending is everyone else's fault so it says the following after announcing the end of her long-running daytime talk show on Wednesday, sorry about that, um, Ellen DeGeneres appeared on Today Thursday morning show to tell Savannah Guthrie why she decided to end on, why she decided to move on and how toxic workplace allegations impacted her decision. She said, if it was why I was quitting the toxic workplace stuff, I would have not come back this year, she said. I really did think about not coming back because it was devastating. I'm a kind person. I'm a person who likes to make people happy. I just kept on saying to my wife, Portia de Rossi if I was a fan of somebody and even if I loved them I would think that there must be some truth to it because it's not stopping right on the heels of that I read in the press that there's a tough work environment which I had no idea never saw anything that would even point to that and that's a partly the biggest problem of this whole thing unfortunately as much as she might want to argue that she's a kind person From what we saw so far, especially apart from Kevin Hart, there weren't many people I can think of who really stepped out in front and tried to defend her. There was a lot of other actors. I forgot there was one particular actor who kind of went out on his limb and basically said, nah, she's always been a bitch. Um, She's always been horrible to work with. But, you know, people just kept quiet because she wants to keep it to the facade on the show, blah, blah, blah. He buried her. I forgot who the guy was, but he was really forthright in his criticism. So when people like that are saying that and people that work behind the scenes, there has to be some truth to it. It just has to be. From the little work that I've done being a TV extra and, you know, doing some movie extra work, like, you know, it's a small world. If people know you're a piece of shit, they're going to definitely tell some people. They're going to find out and then the word's going to carry on and people are going to avoid working with you. But I guess because she had the biggest show out and it was getting crazy numbers, people were willing to put up with her shit. But the moment the numbers dipped, 
everyone then had their voice. Everyone basically um, was less afraid to speak up and use their voice. So she can say that all she wants, but unfortunately that toxic work environment did obviously exist. And the fact that she didn't know is basically more evidence that she maybe didn't lead in the right way when it came to making sure that her staff members were treated adequately. So the following, when Guthrie asked DeGeneres if she felt like she was being cancelled, the talk show host responded and she said, I really didn't understand it. I still don't understand it. If it was, it was too orchestrated, it was too coordinated. People get picked on, but for four months straight for me. But for four months straight for me, and then um, for me to read in the press about a toxic work environment, when all I've ever heard from guests uh, um, every time they come on the show is what happy atmosphere this is and what happy place this is. But again, that's a poor example. How are you going to use the word of a guest who only comes in to film one segment of a show once every, I don't know, couple of years? Of course, they're not going to have a good handle on what the people that actually work on a show are kind of suffering with. They're not going to have a good handle on it whatsoever. That makes completely no sense. Sorry, I had to get some water because I'm, I'm hiccuping for some reason. But yeah, I didn't really get that point from her. That was a very strange point. So the following, um, I don't know how I could have known when there's 255 employees here and there was a lot of talk, there was a lot of different buildings. Unless I'm literally here until the last person goes at home at night. It was my name on the show, so it's clearly going to affect me and I have to be one to stand up and say, this can't be tolerated. But I do wish somebody would have come to me and said, hey, something's going on, what you should know about. Nah, nah, I don't buy it. You, to be a leader, that's part of your job. You kind of have to be attuned to what's going on. You should put people in positions, whether it's people at HR, whether it's your right-hand person. There should be somebody that works within the Ellen DeGeneres show that's got their finger on the pulse, that's kind of getting the talk of the town, that's kind of, you know, gauging the atmosphere in the lunchroom, whatever's going on. You should know what the general consensus is and just check in with people. But you can imagine someone like an Ellen DeGeneres, you know, popping in when it's time to film, you know, walking around like she's on a flipping cloud or something and just generally not being really hands-on with the overall with the overall well-being of people that work for her which you can't blame any sorry which you can't blame anybody else but yourself you can't then go and start saying oh it's orchestrated and again the orchestrated part of it of course it's orchestrated that's what cancer culture is if anybody should know that's energy generous right being culture and interviewing people who do then go and get cancelled maybe later on everyone should know that part of cancel culture is the orchestrated nature of it right it's fans or it's people that didn't like you to begin with seeing an opportunity to bury you and then doing everything in their power to make sure that happens whether it's kind of contacting your sponsors <clears throat> whether it's kind of holding on to news until you film your show or your show releases there's always a coordinated attack when it comes to this sort of cancellation of things it happens all the time this isn't a new thing <clears throat> it continues here it says um, how can I be an example of strength and perseverance and power if I give up and run away, she said. And so it really is one of the reasons I came back. I worked really hard on myself. And also I had, um, I have to say, if nobody else is saying it, it was really interesting because I'm a woman and it did feel very misogynistic. Oh, get out of here. Come on. Really? Now she's trying to fr use the kind of, you know, I'm a woman. Um, it hurt my feelings. Men are trying to cancel me thing. No, it wasn't that. It was other women, mostly. And from what I saw, a couple of gay dudes who were complaining that working at Ellen DeGeneres show was horrendous. And people there got treated like shit, either if it was by her or by people that worked underneath her directly, who had direct kind of contact with Ellen DeGeneres. So for her to say now that it's a misogynistic thing is she's cutting at straws. It continues. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, no, she, no, she, well, that's the thing she said there. But yeah. What can you do, man? And the general show's over. Like Tim Dillon said, she should have walked away, you know, on her own accord regardless anyway. These people, you know, she's got more money than God. Um, she's famous and she'll ever be in the future again. There's no real reason to continue doing a show just because you want to keep doing a show because you're addicted to the attention. You know, turn off the cameras, go home, you know, start up a little YouTube thing if you want, you know, to, to make that make sense, cool. But there's no real need to put yourself in a firing line all these times, especially if you can just take yourself out of it and enjoy your riches and your lovely wife and your big house. Why do that yourself? Why do that yourself? 